Hey everybody, Sunny here. Before we get to the show, I just remind you all where you can listen to my podcast, Casa Loud Chats. I'm on Anchor, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and more streaming platforms. I'm even on YouTube. With YouTube, just search for Casa Loud Chats and every episode of my show is up there on YouTube. And now, on with the show. Everybody and welcome to Casa Loud Chats, a podcast dedicated to Nickelodeon's the Casa Grandes and the Loud House universe. And I'm your host, Sunny. And welcome to episode 34 of Casa Loud Chats. And today we have some very exciting things to talk about on the show. We're going to talk about the brand new episodes of the Loud House and the Casa Grandes that came out during Friday. Some brand new episodes that are very exciting. Uh, and of course, we have some news to talk about with the various shows, of course. But today I'm actually not alone in talking about all the brand new episodes of the Loud House and the Casa Grande today. I have a very special guest will be here today, a first-time guest, in fact. This person I've known for a very long time in the fandom, but known them on Twitter as Gravity Ferb or Ryan. Welcome to my show, Ryan. Thank you, Sonia. I really enjoyed your introduction. It's really great to be on your podcast since I've known you, I've been friends with you for such a long time. Like, I think we got into the Loud House so around the same time, like around the summer of 2016. I'm very thankful to have met you through the show and that we've stayed into the Loud House for so long that we've had stayed friends for so long since you're, you're definitely one of my best friends and one of the biggest Loud House and Casa Grande's fans I know. Wow, thank you very much. Yeah, it's so cool to actually have someone else that's been in the fandom as long as I have because I've been in for like since the beginning. Well, not like in the middle of season one, but it's so crazy how we're still here. Like season five has just begun and we're probably going to be here for a while because we have season six coming up eventually. So isn't that crazy that we've been here for a long time with the show? Yeah, it's like we've both have been there since the first season. And like, I don't think I couldn't when I got fell in love with the show, like in 2016, I don't I couldn't don't think I could have ever had seen it like going on for at least six seasons and like getting a spinoff and a podcast and all this success of the show really does deserve. Like, I think it definitely does deserve to have stayed the the highest rated kids show for almost half a decade now. Yeah, it's just, it's crazy. I just never thought I'd be here as long as I have at doing this, this show as well and inviting people like you onto the show, like fans of the show. So Ryan, there's probably people out there who don't know who you are. So I'd like you to give a little introduction about yourself to our audience. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure. My name is Ryan. I, I actually just turned 23. The uh, Season five premiered with schooled one day before my my birthday actually my birthday is on September 12th so I I just turned 23 so I currently go to I go to college I'm I'm most likely going to be actually going to be graduating in the in the spring of 2021 so I'm looking forward to doing that so aside from the Laudos and the Casa Grande sign I'm like you Sunny I'm also really big a really big Disney fan as well and I'm also since I know you recently got into it I'm also a big fan of the Simpsons as well Mm. so I, I I'm a big Simpsons fan like you, so we definitely have a lot of things in common. Yeah, I can't. Are you looking forward to season 32? I am. <laughs> have yes, you kept I up? <laughs> I have. Yes, I've watched every season from season 28 was when I started watching the like the new episodes live as they premiered. So I pretty much like pretty much the Simpsons is, along with the Loudos and the Cost Garnets are some of the shows I like make sure to never miss a new episode of. Yeah, I just got into it recently. I just got into it in the summer. So I've been skipping a- around because, of course, Bart became my favorite character. So people started recommending episodes about him to me. So I've, like, skipped through different seasons, but I've tried to stay in order. But I've watched season 31 to get ready for season 32. But I'm still in, like, season 8 as of right now. I haven't finished binging the show yet. So, you know, but I'm ready for season 32, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, like... You're also about the same age as I am. I'm 24. You said you're going to graduate next year. I'm hopefully going to graduate college next year too. So it's kind of cool we're still in the same age range there. And we're into, you know, these shows that are mainly for kids. But, you know, I think it doesn't matter if you're a kid or not. These shows, especially the Lighthouse of the Casa Grandes, are so enjoyable for anyone. Yes, I, I agree. I think they're great shows like anyone at any age can 
can, can enjoy like i'm sure a lot, a lot of other adults and i know there's a lot of people our age are like young adults that, that still really enjoy watching a lot of since i'm friends with some other people that are about our age or in the fandom yeah, so it's really cool. We have a variety of people into the show. And of course, today we're going to be talking about the Loud House and the Casa Grandes, the brand new episodes that came out. Of course, we just started season five, so that's very exciting. And we have a few of the last episodes of season one of the Casa Grandes to look forward to. But we do have some exciting news to talk about. So Ryan, are you ready to talk about some exciting news for these shows? I definitely am. All right, let's get into some Casa News! All right, so this week we are going to get more brand new episodes of The Loud House and The Casa Grande's premiering on Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time like last time. And we have two brand new episodes of The Loud House and two brand new episodes of The Casa Grande's. The two brand new Loud La- House episodes are going to be Strife for the Party and Colonel of Truth. The one is about Lola and Lana's birthday party and the one uh, Colonel of Truth is going to be about Lincoln joining the news crew. Uh, Ryan, are you excited for-, for these new Loud House episodes coming up this week? I am, yes. I think that I think that Lola and Lana like work really well together. Like I think episodes like patching things up and Sister Act at one of the more recent episodes showed they have really great chemistry together and I'm like from what it showed up like like in the promo they showed like Lola really planning her party. So I think that episode's gonna be really great. And then so far I've really liked how we've seen Lincoln and then also Clyde, Liam, Zach, Rusty, and Stella in, in middle school so far. So I think that that episode will be really fantastic as well. So yeah, yes, I absolutely agree. I'm really excited for these episodes, especially the Lola and Lana episode. The twins episodes always seem to hit really well. Like, I liked Sister Act of Season 4. I think that was a fun episode. But the fact that we're getting a birthday episode, one that'll, like, you know, highlight them aging up in the show, because, of course, Season 5 is focused on the characters aging up, is really cool. So that we're getting what will, uh, what, will, what will probably be Lola and Lana turning 7. So I think that'll be that's gonna be really cool. I think so too, and it, and it will be interesting to see like an episode about like a loud sibling having a having a birthday. Since we, I don't think we've really had one. Like we've had Lynn Senior and, and Rita have birthdays, and we did have have like in the whole picture like Lincoln recreate like birthday memories. But I don't think we've actually have ever had an episode where like a loud sibling ages up. So I think this should be really cool. Yeah, because especially we, when we heard about season six, they said there's going to be more birthday episodes, and we're getting this one this season, so I'm wondering if we're going to get even more birthday episodes this season, and then eventually keep doing that with season six, because that's what they said for season six, so I'm not sure who else is going to get a birthday episode this, this season, but the fact that Lil and Lana are getting one is going to be really, really interesting, that's for sure. I think so, too. And I'm also excited, of course, for the Lincoln and Friends one, the one where they're, like, trying to solve a mystery about, like, missing popcorn or something. Because, of course, I love the Lincoln episode we're going to talk about later, and Lincoln's my favorite character. So the fact that he's getting another episode with his friends is going to be really fun. I think so, too. And I also like the episode they did last year and season. The plot sounds a little bit similar to the one they did about a year ago in October for season four, the one where, where they're trying to find the the music box and yes. i really like that that episode a lot too so i think i'll probably enjoy this one as well yeah tales of woe that was the stella episode i like that one too so it's cool because i thought that lincoln was gonna like join the news crew and make some new friends but seeing because we got a promo that i'll link in the description of this podcast we got a promo for these new episodes that lincoln's friends are going to be in the episode so they're probably going to join the news crew with him you know to, to help him out and stuff so it's always nice to see lincoln and his friends up to their fun shenanigans, you know? <laughs> yes, I, I agree. And I think that Stella's a really great addition to their group. So I, I think it's great that, like, especially since Ronnie Anne moved, moved away, that Stella's a great addition to their to their group. And I'm glad that she's a big part of the show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Stella's really stepped up as a character. I love her a lot. But I'm glad that she's just one of the guys, you know? Like, she's just a friend in their group and not, like, you know, with anybody, you know? But I'm just glad that, like, she's... A great addition, you know, and she's really contributed a lot to their friend group. Yeah, but I definitely agree. And then, of course, we're getting two brand new episodes of the Casa Grandes. We're getting the Bobby episode called Boo Boo Business, where he starts a new business. And then, of course, we're getting Blunder Party, which is the Roddy and, and Sid sleepover episode with her, their friends. Are you excited for these Casa Grande episodes, too? 
I definitely am. The the promo was pretty interesting. Like I rem it had like like Bobby and and Abuelo like like rapping. Yes. <laughs> I, I was so confused at that part, like, what is happening? <laughs> yeah. And then I, I was like, like, Sir, Sergio, I, I assume he's probably part of it as well. So I, I saw him, like, working, like, like a, a record machine, so I, I assume he's, he's probably helping them with, like, the rapping. Yeah. And then we also saw Roddy and her friends dancing together, because I thought the sleepover episode was just going to be a Roddy and Sid episode, but seeing that their friends are also going to be part of it makes sense, too. So it'll be nice to see Roddy and her friends all together trying to have a sleepover, but of course, it seems that Carl and Adelaide, who's gonna, who's gonna, you know, we're gonna talk about that episode with them, are also gonna be in this episode causing trouble, so that's gonna be really interesting. I think that the Coscarani crew might be playing out like Carl and Adelaide become good friends because of what we saw in the description for this episode, and of course, what we saw in Uptown Funk, which we'll get to pretty soon. Yeah, like I talked about on the, uh, I forgot to plug this in the beginning, but I did another Casa Live session with Sarin, Nat, and Nate of the fan, Loud House of Casa Grande fan page, which, you know, to kind of promote that for the gang, we have our own Discord Discord server now where we'll do updates on those, and we're probably going to do them very frequently nowadays. We really enjoy doing those live sessions, and it's been really cool collaborating with Sarin and the guys to do that. So, uh, as I said on there... Well, they've really been hyping up Carl and Adelaide since the beginning. Because, like, in How to Train Your Carl, she was like, Oh, Carl, look at the thing and stuff. And she, I don't know. They've always they've been hyping up Carl and Adelaide as a pairing. So the fact we got an episode with, the, with them, which we'll talk about later, and they're going to be in this episode together causing more trouble. They said to really be hyping up this friendship between Carl and Adelaide. I think so as well. Like, I don't know if after this episode we'll see any more of it in season one since there will only be like a few episodes left. But I definitely think in season two we'll probably see Carl and, a lot of Carl and Adelie episodes and moments. Yeah, definitely. And we're going to talk about those final Castagrande episodes that were just announced today. But before we do that, I just want to jump over to today. The Loud House and the Castagrandes posted the title cards for both episodes, which they both look really nice. Do you what, what do you think of the of the what do you think of the title cards that just came out say for these new episodes? I really like them. I think that the Lados and Cascarnes crew always do really do an outstanding job with the the title cards. Like I like how the Lados they always manage to find a place to put to put Link in and and there and the Cascarnes how cards are really cool too. And I think that they definitely set up what we I think the title cards and the promos always give us a good idea of like what to really expect in an episode. And I definitely think that these ones were no exception. Yeah, and before we head over to the Casa Grande episodes that were just announced, I forgot to point out that we also got an exclusive sneak peek of the new episode with Casa Grande's Boo Boo Business, where um, Daniel Day Kim is going to be voicing a new character on the show, Mr. Hong, for that episode. Oh, I'm sorry. oh yes. Yes, yeah, so everybody, don't forget, there's going to be brand new episodes of The Loud House and The Costa Grande premiering this week at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Don't miss them. They're the same time they were last week. All right, so yep. let's move on to brand new episodes that were just announced for the Casa Grandes. So we now have the final two episodes of Casa Grande Season 1. To complete Season 1, we just heard about them this week. So the first episode that was just announced is going to be a special. It is going to be a special. Uh, it is going to be called Cursed. So the scripture for Curse says, Celebrity, psych uh, celebrity psychic Ernesto Estrella deems Great Lake City to be bad luck and Abuela believes him. So Ryan, what do you think about this? We're getting another Casa Grande special and Ernesto, who was in a very special episode that I enjoy very much, is coming back. What do you think about this special? I think it's great. I think that the specials are always fantastic since it gives them time to, to do a longer story. And I like that the Casa Grande did right away like the loudest and do it until season two with uh 11 months leaping the first episode of season two but i like that the cost is doing it twice since we had this and then operation dad around the middle of the season and i de bet you're definitely excited that a character from your favorite episode of the show and probably your favorite episode from any tv show is coming back since i know you really 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 love the horror scope i do <laughs> and i was talking about in the castle live session but that it probably won't happen, but if they if they were to reference horoscope in this episode, I would probably lose my mind. You know, like maybe they drop something like Roddy would say, like, "Oh, well, well I don't believe everything Ernesto says. He's told me that I was gonna find true love, but that didn't happen, of of course. But you know, 
I, it's wishful thinking. I, yeah, I just, I, I don't know if they will reference that episode in this episode. Probably not. But the fact that Ernesto was from the horoscope and he's going to be in this episode, I don't know. It, it, pro- it probably won't happen. <laughs> I don't think so either. But it would be <laughs> cool if it didn't. I, I know that like both of our, our good friend, Natalie, Wyoming Farmer Giant, I know that she did a, like a, a live reaction to the horoscope when yeah. and it, would, so it would be pretty, since I know you would be really happy that happened, it would be pretty cool if, if you did a, a live reaction to, to this special. Oh my and gosh. Ha- happening. You know, like, it, only if I find out the link is in the special, then I'll do a live reaction. <laughs> then I'll lose my mind, you know, but again, probably won't happen, but whatever. But yeah, I'm really, really excited. I knew we were going to get another Casa Grande special, but this is something I never thought they would do in the show. And I know some people were saying that, like, oh, this is just the Casa Grande version of No Such Luck with Bad Luck and stuff, but Abuela's always been interested, Rosa's always been interested in the supernatural, and believes in the supernatural, so it's understandable that she would think that the entire city is bad luck, but, you know, you, you can't just leave a city thinking that it's bad luck, so I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't know whether she's just gonna try to, like, give everybody good luck charms or potions or whatever she's gonna try to do to cure the city of bad luck, but... You know, I'm really, I'm really excited about the special. Yeah, I think I think there's a lot of some Casa Grande's crew do a really good job with like using their time with that 22 minute special, like Operation Dad, which is the only Casa Grande special we had so far. Was a was a good example of this, and still like after over three years since they aired, like Eleven Miles Sleeping and the Loudest Mission Relative Chaos, which was the first two 22 minute episodes of the Loudest, they're still in my top five favorite episodes of the show after over three years now. So the the loudest of Casa Grande's crew do a really great job with using the time for the specials, and I bet that this episode won't be an exception to that. I agree. I have mixed feelings on Operation Dad, so I'm hoping this won't be a little better than that special, but, you know, to each his own. And then, we now have the last episodes of Season 1 announced for the Casa Grande's after that special. So we're going to get two episodes for the last uh, episodes of season one of the Casa Grande, which is going to be Love's Got What's Love Got to Do with It and Dial M for Mustard. So what's Love Got to Do It is after a magician hypnotizes Bobby into thinking he's a cat, the family needs to stop him out of it. So Ryan, what do you think of this premise? Oh wait, so I think that <laughs> to be honest with you, when I first heard the description of this episode, but what for some reason I thought of the loudest episode garage band where Lisa used that device to to get the the mice out of the garage and she hypnotized Lenny. So since and since Bobby and Lenny like seem to have a lot of things in so have seem to have some things in common. I I thought about that episode for some reason, but I don't. I think like that sounds like a, an interesting premise for an episode, and I'm sure that the house and the the Costco and his crew will be able to pull this off and make it and make it work, but I think it will definitely be an interesting episode to see, and probably a great first segment of the first season finale. You know, I hate to be the negative Nancy, but when I first heard this episode, I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> We're getting... Okay, so, you know, I've, I've, I've been excited about what's going to be the final, the finale of season one. The finale of season one is going to be a, a magician hypnotizes Bobby into thinking he's a cat. Really? <laughs> That's what you're going for? I mean, I don't know. I just, I don't, it sounds so odd, you know? Like, I get it because, you know, the Casa Grandes, they've had, you know, Ernesto in the show and magic and stuff. And, of course, Op- Rosa believes in everything, of course. We'll have the curse special. But this is so odd. And I was just thinking about, like, if this is their way of getting the gang of cats back into the show, why does it have to be this? <laughs> I don't know. It uh- just... It's so odd to me. It just seems like a weird idea for a premise, you know? Reality is like Bobby ends up bringing cats to the the building. Like, there are all those cats in the the Casa Grande's first appearance in the Lounge and Relative Chaos. Yeah, it's just... I don't know what to expect from this episode. It just seems like an odd episode to end the show with. And also, because we've seen to have... We've been having a lot of Bobby episodes lately, even though... I feel like we haven't had a, a lot of them. It's just like, it feels like Bobby's got a lot of attention, a lot of episodes. So the fact where anyone would like Bobby thinks is a cat is just really, really strange. <laughs> yeah, so it's definitely a strange 
I have faith in the crew that they'll be off. And now we finally know the last episodes of this season of the of the Casa Grandes, which is going to be Dial M for Mustard. Roddy and her friends uncover a town mystery, Bruno's missing hot dog cart. So this episode definitely reminds me of Tales Well in the Loud House. It feels like a Lake of the Friends episode for sure. What do you think about this final episode of the Casa Grandes? I think it sounds like a good way to end the season since, you know, Ronnie Ann's the star of the show. And if this episode gives us like more of an, like we, in season one, we did see a lot of her with Sid, but we didn't see like a lot of her other friends from the Academy. We only saw them in like two episodes I can think of. Like, and if we saw her like in her, some of her friends with like some of the clubs. So we saw her in from the episode, the two of clubs. I think this could be a really good episode and hopefully give us a really good look at what season two will be like if they do more episodes with Ronnie and like, with more of her friends just said like kind of like in the loud house season one where like lincoln the main episodes of lincoln were him and clyde and then starting in season two they started doing more episodes with him with clyde and also rusty zach and liam yeah it's been really cool that like you know sid may be running his best friend but they've also been adding samir casey nikki and also us uh, Laird as a, uh, too, just to kind of give Roddy and the same amount of friends in her friend group as Lincoln has. So, you know, I'm really, I'm excited for this one, of course, because I love Roddy, and so I'm glad that she, the last episode is going to be focused on her and her friends. But it just feels kind of like, this is just, I feel like this, this could be just a Lincoln episode in the Loud House, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's going to be fun, that's for sure. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think so, too, and I think that this should give us a good look at to what season two will be like and who knows maybe the bobby episode will be the same thing as well maybe it'll show like what what bobby will be like and like what his future will be like going forward into season two like i guess it'll be interesting i probably should have said this when we talked about the episode but maybe they'll have like Lori help him help him out like maybe she'll come from college to help him out but i'm not sure but it'll be interesting to see yeah because we saw in school that bobby appeared in school to have Lori move in and I've said it before and I'm still thinking it's gonna happen but we don't know yet with season two or we don't know anything about season two yet is that Lori's gonna make a lot more appearances in the Casa Grandes than this season because she had two appearances but I think she'll be there more frequently now that she's closer to the city and to see Bobby more often so we'll see her in the Loud House sometimes but I think now she's gonna try to, I think she's gonna move her to the Casa Grandes in season two but if they're going to do that, they're going to have to age up the Casa Grandes. And we still don't know if they're doing that. But because Bobby's appeared in the Loud House with Lori in school, that means he's aged up in the show. So they have to age up the Casa Grandes for season two to make that work, you know? Yeah, so I could see them doing that, I guess. Probably the biggest, like so far from what we've seen in the, the Loud House, the biggest change has probably been, like outside of Lincoln going to, to middle school and Lori going to the college probably the biggest change is Lily. Like she got like a brand new outfit. Like she got like a shirt and and shorts instead of just like her usual diaper. So I guess it would be interesting to see if like Carlitos if he gets a new outfit if they decide to age up the Casa Grandes during season two. Yeah. So it's it's crazy that season one is gonna be almost over. I mean, we're, we've got these last episodes of Casa Grande season one, and then season two is possibly gonna air in October because. So far, we only know that Canada got an air date for October 24th, and that means we have to air like season two as soon as season one is over. So, Ryan, I want to ask you, for the Casa Grandes, what have been your overall thoughts about season one? Did you enjoy the spinoff? Like, did you enjoy the episode, the overall show of season one? What did you think about the Casa Grandes as a whole? If I'm being completely honest, I absolutely love the show. Like, Ronnie Anna's, like, ever since she first debuted in season one she's honestly has always been my favorite character who isn't part of the loud family so like ever since they first announced this spinoff like back in february 2018 i've always been really really excited for it and like when it finally came in october i was just so thankful that this is probably like a i think a rare example of a spinoff that's just as good as it's as its predecessor was so so overall i've really loved the cosmic grinders i i like that the that the series have gotten them a chance to get more screen time and to develop them more and i think it's just as great funny and fantastic as the loud house is so i a, a very rare ex example i can think of of a spinoff being just as good if not maybe even better than its predecessor so i definitely love the cost Grande season one and i hope that season two will be just as good and i bet we'll probably get a season three announcement either right before season two like we had the loud season six or season five or very shortly after and i'm glad that the show's been getting very high ratings like it's already the second or third most popular 
kid show and show on Nickelodeon. So I'm very thankful for the Costco Ronnie's and for its well-deserved success. Absolutely. I'm going to echo that too. I mean, of course, before I, before the show was called Casa Loud Chats, my show was called Casa Grande Chats because I just wanted to focus on the Casa Grandes because Rodian has always been my favorite character next to Lincoln. So the fact that she got an entire show with her family that fleshed her out and fleshed her whole family out has been wonderful. I mean, this show has really meant a lot to me, of course, because yeah, is my favorite, but you know, I've loved seeing the development of Bobby from just being Lori's boyfriend to Carl taking over shows, Sergio, and all of the characters who have developed in the show, and of course, Sid coming in, and just the show has been wonderful like you said it's just as great as the loud house you know that also factors into some people who were in the loud house working on the casa grandes of course who make it just as great as the original show and of course having you know the the crossover and continuity with the main show really makes both of these shows so equal to each other you know I mean, I would say, like, with the Casa Grandes, their tile cards are better than the Loud Houses, you know, because they're, they're very beautiful. But both shows are just so great. So it's crazy that season one is just ending soon, and we're going to get season two right around the corner. We don't, we don't know anything about season two yet or what's going to happen with season two. And, yeah, I totally believe we're going to get a season three. Absolutely. Like, I, I have no doubt we're getting a season three. They're going to do exactly what they did with the Loud House and just announce it, like, two or three days before season two comes out. They're like, guys... Season three is coming. I think it. I think it's happening for sure. I think so too. Plus, like Paper Cuts already has graphic novels planned, which we're up to like volume ten of the Loud House. Hopefully, the Cuts Ryan's will have a good run in comics and something. I just talked about. It's actually I remember I getting like flashbacks to when the Loudest Mission first premiered in two thousand seventeen. Like, I actually I remember like like the ending was so emotional. I actually like like cried about. It. So I, I guess I just goes to show you like how much I really cared about Bobby and Ronnie and like they they've all always have honestly been my favorite characters from the Loudest. So, like aren't Part of, like the loud family themselves and i remember being like a little bit nervous that this episode might have been their like their final appearance or that they wouldn't be getting very much appearances in the loudest going forward but i'm so thankful that i was wrong that they not only did get more appearances but they got their own show so i'm you know i'm very very thankful for that cost car so i can't wait to see what the future holds in store for the this amazing show yeah just I same here. Like I thought that last mission or relative chaos was gonna write them off the show, but then they were like, "No, no, we're not doing that." You know, because we know how popular Roddy is as a character. We're gonna give her Bobby more appearances, but then of course give them their own show. And I'm glad that like you know because they have their own show they're not, like, separated from the Loud House. You know, we've had Lincoln and Lori come into the show because they know those relationships with Roddy and Bobby are super important to the universe is connecting. And also, you know, we've had, like, the, the one episode with Kurt where, like, you know, Carl ended up at the Loud House and they've, you know, referenced stuff on the Loud House, like them watching Dreamboat and stuff. So they're still very faithful to both shows as, like, we're not going to separate it. We know that they're, they're too... They too, they they co cooperate together. They live, they live in harmony somehow. And even with the Loud House, we're gonna get crossover episodes with the Casa Grandes as well as season five. So they're not gonna forget that. It's kind of important to have both shows connect in in some way, but also separate them where they can be their own things. Even if we've had episodes of the Casa Grandes that kind of felt like the Loud House too. But you know, I just I've loved this show. I've been so happy that it's you know been a thing. And the anniversary is coming up in a month. Which is crazy, you know. So it's crazy that season yeah, one's anniversary to, soon. Yeah, it's hard to believe that on the fourteenth is the first of, uh, anniversary when it officially appeared, and, and actually a little bit sooner than that. They, since I remember they released going overboard on their YouTube channel yes. before then, so we got to do it a little bit earlier. And I, I think I said this on Twitter, like my un most unpopular Nickelodeon opinion, but I still hold to it that the Cost Grinds is definitely my favorite Nickelodeon spinoff of all time, and definitely one of the top five. But, like definitely one of the best shows they've ever done yet and we're only in season one so yeah overall i i really love season one i and i'm betting that just like the loud house the gospel will probably improve with each with pretty much each season yeah absolutely like i'm really excited to see what they'll do for season two but it's been really great having this show and hopefully these last episodes of season one will really deliver especially curse like that, that that special i'm just so looking forward to and i don't know what's gonna happen but i'm really looking forward to that and all these last episodes
All right, so that's all the news except for some final news with the Loud House and Casa Grande's YouTube page. So we've had a little bit of updates from the Loud House and Casa Grande's YouTube page that I always like to highlight. So the first update we had since I last talked about it was the Loud House ABCs video, which they highlighted a bunch of stuff, which going through the alphabet, which is pretty cool. Then we had a She Made a Lie Detector House of Lies clip from the Loud House. Then we had the loudest uh, Loud House Moments Part 2, which is just like like, the highlights of really, like, crazy moments with the Loud family, you know, going all nuts and loud, of course. And then, uh, today we, or yesterday, we had any time Carlitos copies someone that speeds up a clip from Copy Camp from the Casa Grandes. So, Ryan, do you watch any of the content from the Loud House and Casa Grandes YouTube page, and do you enjoy the content they post? I very much do. I think it's great to have, especially while the shows aren't, like, like, sometimes a show, they like, haven't done this but like this month, like for the first time since November, they're having like two episodes of both shows in the same night in a row. But sometimes, but previously we've had, we usually have like one week of new episodes for the Loud House and the Costa Grandes each month. Then we'll have the, the shows on hiatus for about three weeks. So I think that these are definitely good to have while the shows are on hiatus. And I think that it's definitely good to give us some um, like expanded content. And I'm all, I'm always for more Loud House and Costa Grandes content. So I definitely really love these YouTube videos and the compilations are, little compilations they do are really great and of course i love the the podcasts are great and like they kind of like they kind of like narrate that their own episodes of the podcast they have done like really cool visuals on the on the youtube channel so i, I definitely really love the loudest class Garden's youtube channel it's, it's probably one of the youtube channels i watch the most I like how frequently they upload new videos and i hope that they definitely continue that yeah, me too. Like, I can't wait for the podcast to come back because we heard that the podcasts are renewed. So we don't know whether what we don't know when uh, a Costco Familiar Sounds and Listen Out Loud are coming back. But I'm real excited for those to return. Me too. I've enjoyed listening to the Loud House podcast for the past three years and Costco Next for the past year. I think that they're definitely great with giving these, like, expanding on the characters even more than what we've seen in the show. Yeah, definitely. All right, so yes, that is all the news this week for The Loud House and The Casa Grandes. And don't forget, again, this week there are brand new episodes of The Loud House and The Casa Grandes on Friday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, back to back. Don't miss them. All right, so we are going to take a break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about last week's brand new episodes of The Loud House and The Casa Grandes that just aired. The first episodes of Season 5 of The Loud House just aired after school. The Boss Maybe and Family Bonding, followed by the Castellarone episodes, Mexican Makeover, and Uptown Funk. When we come back. <gasps> Catherine Mulligan reporting from Franklin Street, where authorities are still searching for a family of spies. Their plot to destroy the Michigan cherry supply was thwarted thanks to these two adorable heroes. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? This is a bad family. I'm sorry we didn't take you seriously, Lincoln. Eh, can't blame you. I gotta admit, it was all kind of crazy. Yo, new neighbors are moving in next door. Let's go meet them. Yeah, oh, we called it. Remember what we talked about? Lincoln, go check it out first. Come in, Agent McBride. Looks like we're needing for another stakeout. A secret agent's job is never done. <laughs> Meant to do that. And we are back to talk about the brand new episodes of The Loud House and The Casa Grandes that just aired. The first being The Loud House with The Boss Baby and Family Bonding, followed by Mexican Makeover and Uptown Funk for The Casa Grandes. So let's talk about the first episode, which is The Boss Baby. Lenny struggles at the oldest in the house to fall in Lori's footsteps as the family babysitter. So Ryan, since you are my guest, I'd like you to go first on this episode. What did you think about The Boss Maybe? I really really loved it one of the biggest questions i had going forward with season five was how they were going to handle with with lenny being the oldest loud sibling in the house and i think they did a great job with it another question i had was like how Lori would still be like included in the show and i like that they're showing us that she will be a part of the show and not just the cost grinds but also the loud house by using her phone and i honestly i love lenny she's probably my second favorite loud sibling after luann and but so i'm glad that she gets her own got her own starting episode and i like her job at her job at ryan girls like i think that's given her a lot of great development and like her being with miguel and fiona has really has been really great i've I loved this episode and i love like shop girl and everybody loves lenny and leader of the rack and this episode wasn't an exception and there were some really cute moments too and like seeing lenny try to take 
take care and look out for all of her siblings, all her mom, dad, and and Lily were at the Renaissance Fair was really cool. And yeah, overall, I just really, I really love this episode. And so far, like pretty much any, all the episodes with Lenny at her, doing with her job have been really great. And this episode definitely wasn't an exception. Yeah, so I'm going to give a little shout out. Of course, I know he's listening to my friend Mitch, who was just on the show last week talking about school. And he's a huge Lenny fan. And every Lenny fan absolutely deserved this episode. I was really, really looking forward to this episode, seeing how Lenny was going to handle becoming the oldest of the family after Lori moved away. And she really delivered on that because I love the way they set up this whole thing with, you know, the beginning, Lenny is become employee of the month at Redinger's, or however you say the store name, Um, and she becomes employee of the month there, and they tell her, like, wow, Lenny, look how far you've come, look how much you've done, and you were really great at your job and stuff, and then when Lenny takes on this role as watching the siblings while the parents are away for a bit, she struggles with that, and she doesn't realize that, you know, at her job, she's able to take responsibility and become a leader, and even though Lori was in this episode for a bit, and got her phone taken away because she was trying to give Lenny advice. I love that at the end of the day, it wasn't Lori that gave her the last piece of advice. It was her friends Fiona and Miguel at the store because they were like, this doesn't sound like the employee of the month that we know. We've seen you at your job. We've seen you, how far you've come and how much your job means to you and how you can ta- be a leader. And pl- like, t- put that into where you are right now in your situation. And Lenny decided to treat her family like shoppers, and that's how she was able to fix the situation. Like, I loved how she, you know, read a children's book to Lincoln and Clyde to cheer, to, you know, calm them down. That was so cute. And other ways she was able to figure out how to do this. So I'm really proud of Lenny. She's come so far in the show, and I love that they've kept her job as continuity in the show because I thought with Shop Girl, they would just be like, oh, she has a job, and they never do anything with it again. But the fact that they brought it up so much and like she's had it throughout the show and still continues to have it, which incorporated into her becoming the now the oldest of the family after Lori moves away was so well done. So I absolutely loved this episode. It was great for Lenny. Yeah, I totally agree. Like, like I said, Lenny's probably my second favorite character on the show. So I, and I, I love that this, that her job at Ryan's has given her great development. Honestly, this episode and also episodes like shop girl and leader of the rock are honestly like, I think those the episodes where she works at her job are usually ha- are just so sweet and heartwarming to watch. And, you know, since Lenny's always so sweet and this episode was really great. And I'm definitely glad they kept her, the continuity of her having her job at Ryan Girls. And that's given her great, great development and just given us really amazing episodes as well. Yeah, so with this episode with Lenny moving forward, stepping up as the, the oldest now, what do you want to see with Lenny moving forward in the show? Do you want to see her learn to drive? Do you want to continue seeing her, you know, taking care of her siblings? What do you think is next for Lenny in season five? I I would. I don't know if it should be this season or maybe season six going forward, but so get, getting her getting her driver's license would be something I would like to see since we haven't really seen it since Driving Miss Hazy, which is one of the very first episodes of the show itself fifth episode segment if we're going in production order so and they haven't really touched on it since then so getting her a driver's license would be something that i like and then i'd also like to see her i guess trying to trying to be the oldest sibling and trying to live without without Lori. since as we saw in school in this episode she's so she's and many episodes before this she is very very close to the Lori. so it's obviously very difficult for her to live without Lori and you know, I, of course, would still want her to communicate with Lori as much as she can. I think that her being in the position of the oldest sibling is very good for her and something that I think will help further develop her character even more than what we've seen so far with her having her job at Ryan Gers. Absolutely, yeah. I really I really want to see Let- Lenny learn to drive because now that Lori's not here to drive everybody around, they do have the parents to drive, but I think the best, the next step for Lenny would be to learn to drive. So I think she's, she, we should get an episode like that. I definitely agree since we haven't really had one since driving Miss Hazy, which was almost five years ago at this point. Yeah. (laughs) All right. So any other final thoughts on the boss? Maybe. I don't think so. Overall, I think this is a really fantastic episode and I hope we get more Lenny said trick episodes and the ones with her job at Ryan Gers have have been fantastic so far. I love this episode and the shop girl leader of the rack and everybody loves Lenny as well. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I've... Letty's really has some very good episodes, for sure, so I can't wait to see what they do with her in the future. So let's move on to the next Loud House episode, which is Family Bonding. Secret agents Lincoln and Clyde investigate the Loud's suspicious new neighbors. So, as I have done on... Uh, as I did do on the Castle Live session, I probably have a lot to say on this episode. But, so I'll let you go first, Ryan. What did you think of Family Bonding? This episode surprised me. I thought, um, if I'm being honest, like, well, I do like the Lincoln and Clyde episodes. A lot of them aren't really my favorites. Like, like I like them. I just don't like them quite as much as some of the other episodes. But this one really surprised me. I thought this one was fantastic. Like, I like them seeing what their new neighbors were like. Then <laughs> I want to mention that I laughed at one. Their the, actually the Millers are their child was named was named Ryan, which of course is my name and our friend Ryan W. Meads his name as well. Yeah. So. <laughs> I also had another no. Ryan on the show, too. Uh, Clark uh, Leader Nine. His name's Ryan, too. <laughs> I've had three Ryans on the show now. Any more Ryans want to come on? <laughs> so, so yeah, that that made me laugh. And I thought this was a really cool episode, too. Like, it's, um, it was kind of like a... I think they were going for, like, a parody of, like, the spy genre. And I thought that was really cool. I, I liked seeing, like, Lincoln. Like, I, that's what he said. I thought Lincoln looked really cool in the black suit too like of course we see him in, in the blue suit in episodes like uh a tale of two tables and yes man but this is the first time we saw him like a like a spy suit and i think that outfit like looked really cool on him and this was a really good episode of like seeing um like i think that that i'm trying to think i'd say that this is an episode where like it's ending really paid off since like the loud family and if i'm being honest i didn't think so at first as well as probably most audience didn't think that the Millers would end up being spies, but I'm really glad that they were spies. That this episode gave a great ending to to Lincoln, since a lot of times uh, Lincoln doesn't get like not every episode for Lincoln ends up being fair. So I'm glad this episode gave him a, a really fair ending and one that he deserved. So yeah, overall I really liked this episode, and it's probably one of if not my favorite Lincoln McLeod episode yet. Yeah, so of course I'm probably gonna take the floor now. <laughs> um, so yeah, like you know, when this episode was announced, like I said, I was like, "Here we go, the typical Clinky McCloud episode as usual." I'm sorry, guys, we get them every season. We're probably gonna get even more this season, and I know season four we had an abundance of them, but hopefully, you know, we'll get a few in the beginning, and then like at the end, they'll just give us one more to end, like they did with season four. But Wow, I'm so impressed with this episode because it surprised me on how great it was. And I, I feel like, again, it was because, you know, the show's been off for a bit, so I've kind of missed the, watching The Loud House. But, you know, after getting the, the really great Lenny episode, I'm like, okay, well, we get the follow-up, you know, Click the Cloud episode. I know it's standard, but man, this was a fun one. Like, you know, I, I what I really liked about it was they really took what could, could have been a really cliche plot and played around with it because in in the, in the past Lincoln's had to learn certain lessons about oh I was wrong about this or I misjudged you or things like that but in the end Lincoln was right about the Millers being spies you know they could they should they could have done that you know like like when I first thought that like when they were revealed to be spies Lincoln was just gonna be like you know shown to be like fighting himself to the ground, you know, in that scene, and everybody's gonna be rolling their eyes like, oh, here we go again. But no, he was right, and the lesson was, hey, you know, maybe we need to learn to trust Lincoln, because he could be right in the end, and I really enjoyed that, and yeah, I loved seeing Lincoln in the little spy suit, I thought that was really adorable, because we've seen him in the blue suit, of course, and we saw him in, the, in a little tux and horoscope, but yeah, the spy suit looks so slick on him, and I really hope, like, this isn't the last time we see Spy Lincoln in the show. Like, I would really love him to just continue doing little spy stuff in his little suit in the season five or season six. Because they continue to give Lincoln different interests throughout the show. Like, Ace Savvy, Cowboys, Magic, and now Spies. Because, like, Lowell Oh, yeah. It's like, oh, they, they actually had... I'm sure you remember they had, like, the little... um That little flashback where they showed, like, Lincoln and Clyde as, like, superheroes and, like, ARG yes. agents. Then, then, um, and then Space... But, but, and then astronauts as well. Yeah, but the neighbors are ghosts. But the neighbors are aliens. But, but the <laughs> ghosts are, yeah, super villains. Yeah, that was that was nice because like we did see their ace savvy costumes, their uh, their ghost hunting costumes, and and their space astronaut costumes, which was pretty cool. So. Yeah, I, I totally forgot about that until you mentioned that. But yeah, I just I found it really cool that Lincoln's like been interested in a lot of stuff. 
because like I said, like he's always gonna be like the guy who's not who doesn't know what he wants to be yet, you know, because all the other siblings have their interests. Like Lenny's in the fashion and Lucy's in like golf stuff, and Link is just like, I don't know what I like. i I'm interested in all kinds of things, you know, so it's always cool that they change up his interests every season. So I would really like to see if they would do more stuff with him with the spy stuff. I, I hope maybe they'll incorporate that into the uh the, the episode this week with the mystery, but probably not. But I, re- I really love this episode because Link is my favorite character, of course, and I loved Schooled. I really did. I was so happy to get a one-hour special that was focused on him. But this episode made Link sh- like, shine the way where I never seen him do so much cool stuff in the show until now. Like, the part where he had the little laser pointer thing and like broke into the Miller's computer that was so badass <laughs> like wow I was so impressed and I'm just like this episode is so great and I've watched it so many times and I love it so much it's just it's so great it's so fun and I don't know what else to say about it it's just it's the best click of it it's the best click of McCloud episode to date but the best link of the episode to me overall and that's saying something for like predictability and anti doff and you know some others uh, friends of dry places this to me is where Lincoln shines the best in the entire series and I hope they continue to do this because season four was like we're not giving you a lot of Lincoln in season four season five like you better deliver more Lincoln because this is what I want and I deserve it. So, yeah, I, I love this episode. I, I thought it was so great. So, I don't have any more to say. I just, I loved it a lot. Yeah, I totally agree. It's definitely my favorite Lincoln McCloud episode yet. And might be my favorite Lincoln episode as well. And I, I agree with you. The spy, if Lincoln's going to be into spies, that will be cool. Like, he's, um like, obviously, he's 12 now. and Which, in the previous episode, he spent 11. So, you know, he's a, a year away from being a, a teen. So, if, the, if this is what he's going to be you know, as spies that I'm, I'm honestly all for it. Yeah, I just, I'd love to, because they've done, like, a savvy episodes in the past with Lincoln and Clyde, where, you know, like, they've done, like, Crimes of Fashion or um, Recipe for Disaster, where they're dressed up in the little Ace Savvy costumes. But I'd love to, them to do that, but just with the spy stuff. <laughs> I think I honestly prefer Spy Lincoln over Ace Savvy Lincoln now. It's so cool. So I hope they incorporate you- that more into other episodes. I do, too, and I... Actually, one of my favorite episodes of probably one of my favorite Clink and McCloud episodes other than this one was the episode Deal Me Out. Like like how that episode discussed of like um like growing up since I like I, I like like as you know, I'm a, a huge fan of this show in the Casa Grande, so I think it's okay to like stuff that you like as a cater that are, are made for kids. So that's probably my might be my second favorite Clink and McCloud episode after this one is the episode Deal Me Out. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that one. That's like a season three. Yeah. That episode where they were thinking they were too old for A Savvy. And then like I remember like at the end like it's like just as long as it makes us happy, it doesn't matter how old we are to like things. And then they went to an A Savvy convention where there was a bunch of like I think it was like either Lincoln or well not Lincoln, that Lori and Lenny's friends were kinda of there that liked A Savvy. So yeah, it was cool. Yeah. It's cool that like, yeah, we're like adults and we like the Loud House of the Casa Grandes. No judging here, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, as it showed like at the end that like like Chaz and, and Becky were were there, they were into A Savvy too. So I I think that's that's another one of my favorite episodes of Clink and McClouds is it really connected to me. Yeah, and it's it's cool because again, Lincoln's twelve years old now, but he hasn't gotten rid of his interest in like pop culture and stuff because you think with him being 12 he'd be like oh i'm done playing dress up or whatever but no he's 12 years old he's you know he's running around a spy suit it's just like it shows that he still likes to have fun even if he's like you know a year older now so i think that's pretty cool <laughs> i think so too and then another thing i wanted to talk to you about is uh the title cards like yeah i'm sure you know like the details in the title cards are like are like really cool like the first four seasons that they've had like of course, all the title cards themselves look really cool. Like the bottom text is just like the the writers and for the episodes just in speech bubbles. But like so far, it's the three episodes gone for season five so far, they've gone like way out with like um, with like really cool details. Like in the, the boss, maybe we got like like Lori's phone yes. in one of the little the boxes. So I've been really impressed with the little details that they've given to the title cards so far. Yeah, it's really neat that they actually decided to do that because 
we we kind of complained on the Castle Live session that they didn't change the intro of the show, which they should have, because they still have Lily in her diaper, which she has a t-shirt and shorts now. I don't know why they didn't change the intro, but they decided to, to change up the title cards, which I think is really cool, that they have them, like, like little more stuff they can add into the boxes where the writers and the, you know, the producers are now. So I think that's really cool that they decided to add those little details in there. And I think it's, it, this is my theory that I said before, I think it's because they saw how beautiful the Casa Grande title cards are, because those are gorgeous with detail. So they were like, oh, wait, we have to step up our game now, because we see those title cards, they're gorgeous, we gotta step up our game. So I think it's neat the way they were able to do that, just put in little, like, items that incorporate into the plots of episodes. I think so, too. And I'm going from what you said about the theme song, I'm, I'm kind of surprised they haven't changed a little as well since then 11 was leaping and tricked like in 11 was leaping they had her in her winter clothes when they get to the loud house logo and then in trick they had her as a ghost when they got to the loud house logo so it would be pretty cool if they changed it to our current look with eventually going forward with season five and season six yeah they might do it eventually but i don't know if they didn't change it now they probably won't but maybe in season six we'll finally get a new intro i'm waiting for a new actual intro where everything is changed and not just lily but they should have just changed Lily's clothes now or erase Lori. <laughs> yeah. Although, although, like you guys discussed on the on the podcast you did with Nate and Natalie, it wouldn't yeah. be it wouldn't be like one boy and ten girls anymore without Lori there. One boy, nine girls. <laughs> All right. Um, is there any other final thoughts of family bonding? I don't think so. I think I've pretty much I've like gushed over how great of an episode yeah. is and how it's probably the best Clink and McLeod episode yet. Yeah, and you guys want to hear another 15 minute rant about me talking about this episode, listen to the live session, because yeah, I just, I adore this episode, and it's probably my favorite episode now so far, and it's only episode 3 of season 5, so that shows there's going to be a lot of great episodes moving forward, but yeah, I just, I love this one. I can't praise it oh. enough. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I- Yes. I guess actually before before we move on to the cost yes. I just want to talk about um my thoughts on season five so far from the first three episodes. Oh, yeah, sure. I think I I think it's fantastic. I think that so far schooled the boss I think that schooled the boss maybe and family bonding are all fantastic episodes that the show has done a great job with like moving these characters up a year and that I think we're gonna be in for a fantastic time season five and that the show isn't going to get stale anytime soon that's going to keep getting better with every season but so far i think oh well, um since we're only three episodes into season five season three is still my favorite season so far but i definitely could see season five becoming my favorite season going forward oh season three is your favorite season why is that i think it's because has a lot of my favorite episodes in it like it has head pose anxiety and really loud music and it has i like that it gave a lot of screen time some more screen time to the allowed siblings so is season three not one of your favorite seasons? Oh, no. It's, uh, season four is my favorite season. Mainly because um, I feel like season four was so solid. We did not have a single bad episode of season four. And, you know, I think season four was, like, the best. But, like you said, season five is off to a really great start. Like, school was wonderful. One hour special, which we never had in the show before. And then the boss maybe moving up Lenny to be the oldest. And then family bonding exceeding our expectations on the Clinky McCloud episode by changing the formula. You know, it's just, it feels like season five. And then now we're going to get a low and lot of birthday episode. They are really stepping up their game now. Absolutely. Definitely. I totally agree, and like, I guess what you said about season four is, to, is that it's like the one of the, I also would have to agree there wasn't a single bad episode of season four, since I just remember season three did have that one stinker, which was ruthless people, but season four, thankfully, didn't have a single bad episode. I mean, some could debate Kings of the Con, but, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't, I don't think it's bad, it's just mediocre at best. <laughs> So those were the new Loud House episodes of Season 5 that just came out. So we're going to move over to the Casa Grandes and start with Mexican Makeover. When Mama Lupe comes to visit, Abuela tries to get her family at top of their cultural game. So Ryan, what did you think of Mexican Makeover? Like the last two episodes we discussed, I honestly love this episode too. I, I was wondering, like, since Croak premiered, since that episode confirmed that Ronnie Ann's great-grandfather unfortunately passed away, so I was kind of wondering if she still had a great grandma anymore since I, I kind of had a feeling that 
that she did since they didn't address it in that in the episode croaked and turns out that she does so i i really like this episode I like them seeing like trying different mexican traditions like i like i i kind of found it funny how like they like dumb basically like dumped hot sauce onto their food which actually made me think of a that made me think of the loud house episode no spoilers like how how lynn kept how, how lynn kept like dumping hot sauce onto all the food for their mom's birthday party and i like the mexican traditions i like the continuity as well like i like that carlota had like the same dress that she wore in the episode yes. miss step and i also like that i like that par who we saw in never friending story was in this episode and <laughs> i mean overall, i made a joke about this on the live stream where i was saying you know par kind of messed everything up when he was like rocking out and i thought bobby was gonna try to say something or say we're not friends anymore <laughs> I, I really enjoy this episode. The only complaint, I guess, I have one complaint is I kind of wish we got to see the painting that Frida did. It's just, oh. It unfortunately got um got boiled in the the hot sauce. Yeah. But yeah. overall, I, I did really enjoy this episode. Like that, pretty much the entire Costa Grande family got some good screen time, and it was just a really fun episode and had some good continuity and a lot of really fun and sweet moments as well. Yeah, so, like Croak, this episode was written by Lalo, and, of course, he follows me on Twitter and interacts with the fans and stuff, so I, I really it's really cool to see him actually write another episode for the show that really does focus on their culture, because I was really excited to see how the Casa Grandes would expand on their culture, and they've done that with, you know, various episodes like Misstep and Croak and so on and so forth. And, you know, this episode was fun, it, it wasn't one of my favorite episodes. It's probably not one of my favorite Casa Grande episodes. But it was just really cool to see them, you know, expand on their culture and also bring in a extended family member of the Casa Grande's Mama Lupe. Because like you said, her, um, Radia's great-great-grandfather passed away, but her great-great-grandmother is still alive, which is pretty cool. And she also has a parent too, like Sergio, which was really neat. And he was also voiced by Sergio, the person who is inspired, like, who has inspired Sergio the pet, uh, Sergio the parent, which is pretty cool too. So to see, like, you know, them kind of, like, try to impress Baba Lupe with their culture and, you know, having, like, everyday be with hot sauce, like, the Casa Grande family were probably not like me because I don't like spicy food, so seeing, like, them try to eat all this food with hot sauce on it, I'm like, no thank you. Like, I do not like spicy stuff at all. But then, like, when they told her that they're, they're not really, you know, they don't really, they don't really, like, they, 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 um, you know, they, they appreciate their culture, but they're not so into it like that. But then Mama Lupi was like, that's okay. As long as you, you know, if you did all of this just to impress me, that means your tr tradition and your fam familia really means a lot to you. And I thought that was really nice. But, you know, I thought it was just a good episode. Not my favorite, but I think it was pretty, it was pretty good. <laughs> I'd have to agree. It's probably like not one of my favorite episodes. Like I like probably like Miss Step and and Flea Market and and like Guess Who's Shopping for Dinner and a lot more episodes more than this one. But it was still a really fun episode and one that I enjoy rewatching whenever it comes on TV. Yeah, I also do like the continuity episode too. Like you said, Carlos' uh, dress was from Miss Step. They're watching Dreamboat from the Loud House. They mention Roddy and does pranks for the first time really in the show, which they never ha they haven't done in a very long time. I was shocked by that. You know, so I like when they continue to sprinkle in continuity because the Casa Grandes are really good at continuity versus the Loud House, but they're getting there with the Loud House. But, you know, other than that, you know, it was it was pretty fun. But hopefully Mama Lupe makes another visit in the show. I'd like to see her come back again sometime. I think so, too. And like how the I like how this episode answers my question from Croaked about about if Ronnie Ann's great grandmother was still alive, just like how the boss maybe answered the one of the biggest questions I had from season five about how Lenny would deal with um, being the oldest loud sleeping. So yeah, overall, this this batch of episodes that answered quite a bit of questions I had with the loud house and the Casa Grandes. Absolutely, yeah. I I really, I really, <clears throat> excuse me. I really do want to see more of their family members because in this episode they mentioned like we want you to know more about the Casa Grande family, and they've mentioned that so much. I'm like, I really want to see the extended family of the Casa Grandes because they've mentioned it so much in the show, and we finally got an extended family member, which is Mama Lupe. But I hope in season two. They explore more of their f familia. I'd really like to see who else is part of the Casa Grande family than just the main core Casa Grande family. I definitely agree. Like it would be really cool, if, like in like in season two of the Loud House, is where we got to see like Ronnie Ann and Bobby's ex extended 
family in the 20 minutes special, which was, of course, a uh, loudest mission relative chaos. It would be very cool that in the Casa Grande season two, we got a, a 20 minute episode where we got to see their extended family, which to some extent, like the first episode of the Casa Grande, sort of where we really got to see their dad since he only had a couple of cameos before then. Yeah, that's the one thing with Arturo. Like, I know you talked about Operation Dad, but the reason that Operation Dad is not one of my favorite episodes, well, one, because they crushed a lot of my head cans and made Arturo stay, and two, he hasn't really shown up much in the show lately. Like, he only appeared two episodes after he appeared, and he had that one cameo misstep, and they haven't incorporated in the show since, and they probably will do that in season two, but I'm kind of upset since he's been around lately. Like, he ever since he stayed, he hasn't really showed up a lot, so... I'm kind of disappointed oh, yeah. that they haven't done much with him, you know? Yeah, you're right about that. Since I think, I'm pretty sure the only, like, after Operation Dad, the only really starring episode they got was Away Game. Like, even then, we didn't really, like, he wasn't really the center of the episode. It was more about, like, Abuela trying to, like, keep Ronnie in and Bobby away from their dad. Yeah, so I really hope they try to do more with Arturo, because I like him. I, I, it's like, you're here to stay, you know, you gotta do more with him, but lately they haven't, so maybe he'll appear in the next episodes coming up, so. Alright, so any other final thoughts on, Me on Mexican Makeover? I don't think so, I just think it was a very solid episode, like that answered my question from Croak about if Ronnie Ann's great-grandmother was still alive. All right, so we're going to move on to the final episode of the Casa Grandes, which is a, also a very exciting one we were all looking forward to, which was Uptown Funk by Bruno Mars. <laughs> um, Adelaide and Carl have an adventure on Mr. Chang's route, but they must work together to save the day. So, Ryan, what would you think about the first Carl and Adelaide episode together? I thought it was a really adorable episode. <laughs> like, I think that Adelaide's a really cute character. I know that one of the loudest friends from tw Twitter, Blade Sword. 91 or, or Sean, or Sean, I know that he like absolutely adores her. So I know that I bet that he probably really loved this episode and I really enjoyed it as well. I think it was really, since we, since I keep bringing up this episode, but we haven't really gotten an Adelie centric episode since Croaks. Like we got, sure, we did get to see her in other episodes like Outtrain or Carl, but it was nice getting another episode centered around her. And this episode was really cute. Like I, I liked getting to see her hanging out with Carl. Like I, I really like seeing her, like seeing her as a fairy was really adorable I like the the outfit that they gave her for that and i like seeing i like that carl at first like he wasn't he didn't really want to play with adley he just played with her to try to get onto the train but then when we they did get to the train they started to like develop their relationship and from what it seems like going forward like with the episode coming out this friday that they're going to become friends going forward within the show and then i also like that it kind of hinted at i think I think the writers were like kind of might be kind of messing with us since I had where like Adley teased that like her and Carl getting married. So I think that like going forward, that might be something like they might start shipping like Adley and Carl together going forward. But yeah. yeah, overall, this was a very fun episode. I liked Uptown Bunk quite a bit. And like a Mexican makeover will definitely be an episode that I'll watch whenever I see it on airing on Nick. Yeah, well, okay. So I'm going to say one thing. I don't think the title of this episode fits the episode itself, Uptown Funk. I don't know. Like, when I first heard this episode, I thought it was going to be something different than what it was. But, you know, this episode was really, really adorable. Like, okay, but first of all, I want to say, we're going to announce this now. This is the first official Casa Grande episode with no Roddy Ann in the show. And it's in season one, mind you. That is crazy. We didn't get a, a non Lincoln episode in the Loud House till season three. So they decided to have a season one episode, have no Roddy Ann. Like, I was waiting for the Roddy Ann cameo in the background, or the, she's going to train or something. But no, they had no other, no Roddy Ann and no other family member except Carl and Adelaide in this episode. And if this was how they're going to set up the ship in quotation marks, they did it in the, such the best way possible. Because, like, yeah, like, Carl at first tried to use uh, Adelaide to get on the train, of course. But in the end, he learned not to use her and saw that, like, Adelaide's a badass, you know? She's six years old, knows how to, ride a, knows how to drive a train. That is so crazy, you know? So it's so cool that she knows that, especially from her dad. And it was just really nice that Carl, like, saw that, like, wow, you're actually pretty cool to hang out with. And I want to hang out with you more sometime. And... At the end, you know, they were playing superheroes together, which was really cute and stuff. And, yeah, they were definitely doing a lot of ship teasing with Carl and Adelaide. Like, you know, them playing mommy and daddy. And Adelaide's like, it's Mrs. Casagrande Chang. Like, the moment I saw that scene, I'm like, is this just shell shock? 
<laughs> you know, it's like, is this Lincoln? Or, are you making Lincoln and Roddy in parallels with Adelaide and Carl? You know, so. But yeah, I I don't know. Like I I don't know if they will like set them up as a ship. They might, or just like keep them like best friends or something. But you know, maybe they'll maybe they'll kind of like have it with Sid and Roddy and in the in the Castagrandes where they're just like best buddies and stuff. But I wouldn't mind them becoming a pairing. Honestly, they do, they did a lot of shipping like shipping fuel in this episode to like show they're kind of like. I don't know, they probably have crushes on each other or something, but yeah, I, I love Adelaide. I liked her in Croats too, but she was so great in this episode, and Carl, of course, is one of my favorite Casa Grandes, and any episode he did always is top tier, so the fact that he was paired with Adelaide, which has been kind of foreshadowed in the beginning of this, of season one, to get a full-on episode with them in season one, which I didn't think we were going to get to like, season two, and we're going to get them again in the, in the Slumber Party episode, shows that, like, they wanted to make this this a pairing, and they're going to move forward with it, so I'm really excited to see what else they'll do with Adelaide and Carl. They're, like, super duper cute together, so yeah, I really love this episode. It's adorable. Yes, I definitely agree, and I think it would definitely be interesting to see on, like, on Friday with Blunder Party, how they're going to, since it's in the description that Adelaide and Carl will be in it, like, how they're going to handle it, like, if they're going to do, like, shipping moments, or they're just going to have them, like, trying to, like, prank Ronnie Ann and said it'll be definitely interesting to see with with Blunder Party coming out this Friday. It's kind of hard to believe that like just a week later we might get answers to our questions. Yeah, yeah, it'll be kind of interesting to see what Sid's reaction is to like at her her little sister hanging out with Carl. You know, like they'll be like, "Whoa, are they best friends now? What? How did that happen?" You know, so. I'm wondering if they'll answer that or just, like, what their reaction will be to Adelaide and Carl just being paired up together, you know? So, yeah, I just, I really like this episode, and I want to see more episodes like it moving forward with different pairings that we can do. And again, Roddy Ann wasn't in this episode. They could have easily put her in here somehow, but they didn't. And again, it's in season one, so I'm wondering if the last, like, Bobby episode, like the Boo Boo Business one, probably won't have her in it, of course, but she probably will, she probably will end up in it, but the fact that they had one episode of season one without her in it, like, feel they feel like more, I feel like they're more confident with not putting her in every single episode, or even every single title card, like, like, like in the Loud House, so, they're really confident with this pairing that they'll make an episode work together, and they did, I just, I want more Carl and Adelaide, they're just so cute together, I don't know what, what else to say, this episode's so adorable and precious, and I love it. Yes, I agree, it's, it's really cool they did make an episode in season one without Ronnie Ann's, like you said, they, we didn't get the first episode without In the Loud House without Lincoln until season three, so we had like over a, a hundred episodes before we got an episode without Lincoln. Yeah, so it was just really cool to get that, that they had to decide to do that. So, any other final thoughts of Uptown Funk? I don't think so. I just overall, this was, I really liked all, I honestly really liked all four of this Friday's episode, and I'm definitely excited to see with, um, with Blunder Party how they're gonna, if they're gonna show us anything with Carl and Adelie's relationship, and I'm definitely happy that we only have to wait a week. We only had to wait a week to find out how it's doing with like, like for example, like I'm sure every Oz fan knows this, but like with like with her Ellis for Love, for example, we had to wait almost two years to see like how Luna and Sam's relationship would be going forward. But like with this episode, we only have to wait a week for it, so it's definitely pretty cool. Yeah, or you could be like me, being a Roddy Kid fan who has to wait till they remember that crossovers are a thing for them to interact. You know, so the fact that Carl and Adelaide get back-to-back -back episodes, lucky them. <laughs> so we'll see what happens with them moving forward. So yeah, all these episodes were amazing. Like, I couldn't believe how great all these episodes were. Like, you know, I said Mexican Makeover wasn't amazing, but I think all these episodes were super solid, don't you think? Yes, I think so too. Like, this is... I think that the... Auto season five is off to a great start, and the, the Casa Grande since the beginning has been off to a great start. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what this coming Friday's episodes will have in store for us. And I think that both shows are just like are just super consistently good right now. Like so, like I said, when we were reviewing the the spy episode, like sometimes the Lincoln and Clyde episodes aren't aren't exactly my favorites, but like this week's episodes were just all fantastic. And I hope that the rest of the episodes will be just as consistently fantastic. And I'm just Always really looking forward to seeing what the uh, shows will have in store for us, since they're definitely my favorite shows on right now. Absolutely. So before we see, we'll, before I'll say we'll see you next time, uh, Ryan, there's a question I wanted to ask you. I know we just started season five, but uh, I wanted to ask you with season five, what do you want to see with the Loud House season five moving forward? What kind of things do you want the show to do in the future? 
Well, since we got one of my biggest questions, which was how Lenny's going to do as an oldest sibling, one thing I really want to see is an episode like with Lori at, at Fairview. I want to see how she's been, since while well, we did get to see a little bit of it in the boss, maybe we didn't get to, it was mostly a Lenny-centric episode, so I definitely would like to see an episode about an episode about Lori, how she's doing at Fairview. I'd, I'd like to see like how her relationship with Bobby's going too, since we saw like Miss Connectula that they're able to stay like keep in relationship and stay in contact so so that's probably my biggest want is um then another thing is i want to see more of lily and and preschool like she's growing up like we've seen in season five so she's she's like talking uh like like in season one to four she she said like like poo poo and (laughs) some other things where like so far she said like so far in these first three episodes she said more words like the first four seasons combined so far um Trying to think of what anything up. Then character birthdays, like we discussed, like we have Lola and Lana's birthday coming up since the Louds are all aging up with this season. I like to see more of that. Um, and trying to think of what else. Um, but this just this is something I just thought about. I think I would like to see an episode, another episode about about Lynn, how she's dealing with Lincoln being part of her school now. Since I like since sometimes she like pinks up she picks on Lincoln by like calling him like stinking and things like that. I want to see how, but as I saw middlemen, she seems to be pretty cool with having Lincoln at, at our school. So that's another thing that I'd like to see going forward with season five. Well, I think I, she's pretty cool with like, you know, like pumbling on Lincoln in school and like stopping her from going to classes, you know? So I don't know what's up with that. <laughs> uh, but yeah. yeah. Uh, what, and- oh yeah. That's, right. that's not everything is that, um, our friend Nate from fan page of the loud house point out is like how much Lincoln's teacher, like kind of changed from like the first time we saw him. And, um, and I think it was middlemen, but like now, like how, how different he's become from middlemen to school. Yeah. I want to see an episode where Lincoln and, and, uh, his, his teacher like kind of bond and stuff and kind of, we see that he's kind of a softy, you know, instead of being like, cause you know, at the end he was just like, eh, whatever, like changing the, the temperature in the, in the room. So maybe he'll soften up eventually, you know? Oh yeah. That would be cool. So we saw like in Lincoln kind of has like a good relationship with his teachers and in, in elementary school, like, like Mrs. Johnson, we saw in, in several episodes of the, Blood also has a pretty good relationship with her, so I think that would be cool if they did an episode. Yeah, and what about the Casa Grandes? Because season one's gonna be ending pretty soon. What do you? What else do you want to see with the Casa Grandes moving forward? I'd really like to see, like we discussed an episode talking about more of Ronnie Ann's extended family. I'd, I'd like to see an, an episode. I'd like to see an episode about some some back some flashback episodes like we saw in Ellis for Love, like how how Lynn Sr. and Rita met. I'd like to see an episode like how how Carlos and, and Frida met. I'd like to see an episode about, I think I'd like to see another episode about maybe Bobby and, and Paro. Like we, we did get Never Friendly Story, which we saw that like their relationship was kind of, I think kind of like in the in the middle, like like Bobby's into like the extreme, like like the, all this extreme stuff that, stuff that Paro's into. So that's an, another episode that I'd like to see then going forward, like with Adley and Carl's relationship, like we do have Blunder Party coming up, but I like to see more episodes about them. And then some of the side, I think I'd also like to see some of the, like the, the characters that live in their building, like like Mabel and like Mrs. Karnicki. I like to see, I think it would be cool if they got their own episodes too. Yeah, well, I think we know how Frida and Carlos met. In Going Overboard, they show that scene of Frida seeing Carlos skating for, like, the first time. So, I think that's how they met in college. Oh, that might be true, since, like, Frida does seem pretty... Now that you mentioned that might be true, since Frida does seem pretty impressed with his skateboarding, so that could be the first time they met. I want to know how Rosa and Hector met, because apparently, according to Horoscope, Rosa said that she met Hector when she was about Lincoln and Roddy Ann's age, so I want to see how they met, you know? Because they know each- see, apparently they know each other for a very long time, it seems like, you know? So I'd like to see that, because I know we saw, like, them when they were kind of, like, married in, um, well, in, uh, the, the one episode, the, oh my god, I'm forgetting the name of it. It's in the Casa Grande arc, the first episode, I'm forgetting it. It's the, it's the greenhouse a oh, power play. I'm sorry. Wow. I mean, yeah. a power play. We saw that little flashback of them as like 
kind of like young adults, but I want to see them as actual little kids be for the first time, you know, so I actually want to see how Arturo Maria met. That's the big question I have. Are we ever going to find out how Arturo Maria met and how they broke up or divorced or, yeah, I, that's the question I have. We don't know how they divorced and I really want to find, I really want them to explore how they, how they met and how they divorced. That's the big question I have for the show. I think so too. And I think that like Nick might be open to doing it since I think that some of their other shows like like Hey Arnold has discussed like really serious topics like that. So I think that they might be willing to let the Casa Grande's crew do something like this as well. Yeah, because in uh, I want this other show I've watched Big City Greens. They have the the mom and dad are divorced in that one, and the mom's still stuck around with the family. But they had an episode where they met when they were little kids. So I'd like to see if we get an episode with Maria and Arturo how they met. Yes, I, I did see, I, I like Big City Greens too, so I, I did see that episode as well. Yeah, so, Ryan, thank you so much for coming on to my show. I really loved having you on. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. I definitely had a, a blast. It's always great talking to, to you since you're one of my best friends. And then I, I really like getting to talk to you about the Laos and the Casa Grande since it's always just so much fun to like, like geek out over something when somebody shares like such a big as big of a passion for it as as you do so i definitely had a, a really great time being talked to you since i i got to talk to you for a lot longer than when we did the the casa grande's jeopardy with ryan and and nate on the on the show that the nate hosted so it was definitely great getting to talk to you for so long about the these shows that we love so much definitely i i love having other people who are on who are just as passionate about the shows as i am so having you on with my first time guest was such a joy so again thank you so much for being here Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. And I hope that I can hopefully get to talk to you either on this podcast or maybe on the one that like you and that you, Nate and Natalie did a few days ago or very soon. And I can't wait for everyone to hear this really fantastic podcast episode that we recorded tomorrow. I think that they're all going to really enjoy it. Oh, yeah, I, I hope so. <laughs> but hopefully I'll have you on. I'll, pro I'll definitely have you on again sometime, you know, because having you on here was great. And hopefully we can talk about something again in the future. Because I have lots of other people that want to come on, but I have lots of other I have lots of people who want to come back on again, of course. Because next week, to announce my next guest, I'm going to be happy for next week's episode of The Loud House and the Casa Grandes. I am having a returning guest coming on next week. Burster MFG or Roddy and Sid on Twitter is going to be coming back on the show again because, of course, he's a huge Sidati fan. And when the Blunder Party episode was announced, he told me he needed to be on for the Sidati episode. And, of course, I promised him he'd come on. So next week, when those episodes come out, I will be having Burster MFG on as a guest to talk about those episodes, of course, with the Classic Rodney episodes and the Loud House, so tune in to that. So, Ryan, is there any uh, social media you'd like to plug on to my show before we go? Sure. Um, well, I'm definitely going to, like, we're recording this through Discord, and I definitely want to try to be more active here, but if you want to keep in contact with me, probably the best way to do so would be on Twitter. If you're not following me, which is a good chance that a lot of you listening to this probably are, so I tweet about the Loud House and the Casa Grande is pretty much non stop there. But my Twitter handle is Gravity Furbs. You can follow me on there. And yeah, overall, thank you so much for having me on this podcast. I can't wait for everyone to hear this. And I definitely can't wait to see the new episodes of the Loud House and the Casa Grande this Friday. All right, so make sure you follow Ryan on Twitter, of course, and thank you so much for that. And as for me, if you have any questions about the podcast or want to discuss the podcast with me, you can contact me over at X Study Clips on Twitter or at the podcast's Twitter, Castellau Chats. And we'll see you all next time on Castellau Chats.